Hi guys. <clears throat> um, thank you for all the, the comments and the emails. Oh, oh, we had someone asked me about my glasses. They are new and they are prescription, and they are bought from the same place that I bought my Bayrams from. <laughs> the, the little man on the stall, and these are genuine Johnny Hilfiger. <laughs> that must be that's Tommy's lesser-known brother. Fifty quid. Anyway, guys. Um, I'm going to tell you another story about Robert. A lot of you wanted to hear more stories. I've got loads. Some of them are a little bit risque that I don't know if they'll get through the YouTube checks, but this one will. Um, <clears throat> this is about 30 years ago, and um, we went down to Devon to a place called Brixham, which is a fisherman town, fisher person's town. Is that the correct way of saying it? Anyway, um, and Sean, the carpenter, had bought a little cottage down there and he'd renovated it, and we all went down there to stay. Me, uh, Rob, Wayne and obviously Sean and uh, it was a lovely little cottage um, and he said let's go to the pub that I found in Dartmoor so we all went to the Dartmoor pub in the evening and it was one of those pubs you walk into and everyone just turns and looks at you and it goes quiet it was quite off-putting actually but everyone within half an hour was our best mates it was amazing it was an amazing night actually and um, everyone was drinking. I don't drink, so I was designated driver. But Sean's car was, he'd driven his car there, so we had a car and I was just going to drive it back. Anyway, halfway through the night, Rob, who used to drink a lot, um, he gave up drinking 15, 20 years ago probably. He was very, very drunk and he said, Look, I need to crash out. And Sean said, Go and kip on the back of my car and then uh, we'll wake you when we leave. So he did that. We spent the rest of the evening in the pub, went out to Sean's car, and Rob was nowhere to be seen. We looked everywhere, we couldn't find him, and we thought, well, do you know what, he's a grown man, um, we're not too worried, he's wandered off somewhere, he'll be fine, uh, we'll catch up with him in the morning. Went back to the cottage, next morning, six o'clock, my phone rings, my mo old mobile phone, my Nokia 3310, or whatever it was back in the day, uh, my phone rang, and it was Rob, sounding really panicky, and I said, mate, where are you? He said, Willie, I've been kidnapped. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I haven't even told the story yet. <laughs> I said, what do you mean you've been kidnapped? <laughs> oh, Rob. He said, I've been kidnapped. I said, well, what do you mean? Where were you? We looked for you last night. You weren't in Sean's car. He said, I got in a car. It can't have been Sean's. He said, now I'm in this barn and it's locked and it's pitch black and I can't see anything and I can't get out. I mean, like, what? <laughs> What? How does that even happen? Anyway, so I said, well, you need to kick the door. He said, they're big wooden doors. He said, they don't hardly make a noise. I said, well, hoot the horn or do something. Trying to get their attention. So anyway, he said, I'll phone you back. So 45 minutes went by. My phone rang again and it was an, a different number. And um, I said, hello. And he said, uh, is that Willie? I said, yeah. He said, oh, this is um, this is the police. I said, all right. He said, uh, we're with your friend Rob. <laughs> oh my God. And he's telling us a story about how he's ended up in this couple's barn. <laughs> so I told him the story and obviously it was the same story. And what had happened was Rob was banging so hard on this, this wooden barn door that the couple thought they were being broken. <laughs> Someone had broken into their barn and they called the police. And so the police arrived and it was the police that opened the, the, the barn doors and there was Rob. <laughs> Minus a finger. Actually, no, he still had his finger then. Um, did he? Yeah, I think he did. Um, and they arrested him. Obviously, they de-arrested him afterwards, but they thought he was breaking in. And obviously, he was very hungover. He was, he was quite scary looking back then. He was my height, and he had a lot of hair, and you wouldn't really want him in your bar. <laughs> in your bar. Anyway, so it was all fine. We went up to pick Rob up, and um, the couple were fine, absolutely fine. And we took him out that evening to the same pub and bought him drinks all night. And, uh, yeah, it was fine. But the guy said to me, the owner of the uh, of the house said it might have been a different story if we'd been driving home and Rob suddenly went oh. <laughs> <laughs> on the back seat <laughs> thank god he didn't because that would have been a scary sight but that's my little story about Rob being kidnapped not um anyway guys 
speaking to my other half, my better half, about buying another motorbike. Obviously I have to okay it with her, she's the boss. And she's really excited about me getting another Classic 350. And I didn't realize how much she loved it. And I said, what, what was it about that bike that you loved? And she said, there's loads of things. She said, I found it so comfortable as a pillion. She said, it's the most comfortable bike I've ever been on. She said, I know that you're, never, you're not gonna pull away at crazy speeds and do 70 miles now down the road, which is true. And thirdly, I love the sound of it. it she said, it, I, I feel like I'm being hypnotized by the sound when we're, we're driving, riding along. I thought, wow. And that's kind of how I feel about it. But I thought for someone who hates motorbikes, and trust me, she's, doesn't, she's not into motorbikes at all. Um, for her to be so animated about the Classic 350, um, so I said to her, so I could get two. Because <laughs> I was thinking in my head, I could get Classic 350 and a Bullet 350, different bikes, but she'll probably feel the same on both of them. I'm not sure how that's going to work. I mean, she, she didn't seem to go with that idea, but I thought I might as well try. But she loves the Classic 350 and she loves the Signals Grey because I then showed her all the colours and she loves the Signal Grey one, which is the one that I really want. Or have another Ernie, as I said to you, the Halcyon Grey. So we'll see. Anyway, guys, I want to just quickly spin a camera around because I've taken the Bonneville out of the garage. I know, shock horror. Um, and he's sitting in the sun looking splendiferous. So um, I will spin the camera around and show you. Guys, what a beautiful day. I, honestly, summer can't come soon enough for me. Anyway. I'm never going to get bored of how this bike looks or how this bike rides. The torque is addictive, Sean. Have I mentioned that? <laughs> it really is. Absolutely love it. There's nothing really more to do to it except for, yeah, I could actually start giving you a list, but there's nothing really much more to do to it. It's perfect in my eyes. Love those tank badges. I think they were definitely worth the money. They weren't cheap, but they definitely changed the bike. love it anyway guys this is a long video uh thanks again for all your comments and your emails and i will catch you on the next video right so